talking about the process. How many now are having joy within your process? Are you learning how to have joy? It's a process to get to the process of joy in the process. <laughs> Amen. Amen. How, how many of you are learning and growing and maturing and hearing within the process? Amen. Amen. I want to see some hands. I want to, I want to know. Amen. The process is no joke. It is no joke, but it's needed. And it's needed for where you're going. Because as you have heard me say many, many, many times, and I'm going to keep saying it, that this is not your end. Amen. 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 Where you are now is not your end. Amen. And sometimes we, you know, are not understanding why God is allowing us to walk through some of the things that we walk through. But we've got to understand it's part of the process. We have to understand that the things that God is allowing it's for my growth. It's for my maturity. The things that God is allowing is because of where I'm going. So it's things that I have to get, and it's things that I have to learn in these places. And, 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 and as we all experience our different process, we've got to see, okay, if God has me here, and, and if, if I'm here in this place and I'm uncomfortable, but yet God is allowing it, then there's something here that I need to get. Amen. It's something here that I need to see. It's something here that I need to learn because I've got to understand where I am now is not the end. I still have other places, other levels, other dimensions that I have to get to. So before I'm able to go forward in those places, it's things that I have to get here. Amen. See, and a lot of times we're, we're, we're not understanding, you know, or we could think that, you know, oh, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for one thing and I'm in my word for answers about one thing, not realizing God is using it to grow me up for where I'm going. See, I can't go to my destiny and fulfill my purpose and I don't have a level of the word and I don't have an understanding of the word. I can't go to different places in God and I don't know how to work my faith. Amen. I can't go to certain places in God and I not have a prayer life. So I've got to see God is allowing some things to build some other things in me. Amen. 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 And it's not always, as I said, comfortable, but necessary because this is not my end. For every promise, there is a process. For every prophecy, there is a process. So when you hear God speak to you and what God is about to do in you and with you and through you, get ready then for the process. Amen. So within the process, we've been talking about <clears throat> relationships. Oh, I, thank you, Minister Deb. I got one. See, when you hit that topic, it's like, ooh. Some things that people don't want you to mess with. That's their money and their relationships. Amen. Amen. But we're going to talk about it. Amen. Amen. Because the relationships, and I'm not just talking about just talking about dating relationships, that's one of the, the main focuses is dating relationships, but even people that you're allowing in your life. See, it, when I'm walking through a process and I'm getting to certain places in God, it would be foolish of me to not look at what's around me and who's around me. 
it would be foolish to, for me not to look at who I'm allowing in my life for where I'm going. When I have an understanding of where I'm going, I got to look at who I'm trying to take. Amen. Amen. And see, as you've heard me say again, many times we, we've got, you know, we've got people that are literally, literally letting go their call and their purpose and their assignments for a relationship. You got people that are literally walking away from their walk with God for a person. It's real. And see, it's things that the church has got to talk about. Because everybody else is talking about it. We're seeing it from everywhere else. But when we talk about relationships and we talk about sex and, you know, it becomes taboo in the church. See, see we, we serve the creator of it. And see, I've got to understand some things and get an understanding of what the word of God tells me about relationships. Because too many times you got people that's not looking to the church for relationships. You have the church not looking to the church for relationships. You have the church not looking within the word of God about relationships. You've got the church that's looking everywhere else in social media and, 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 and television and friends and everywhere else but what the word of God says. Amen. So then the church is finding themselves in trouble when it comes to relationships. Amen. 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 So is it real? Yes. Yes. And just because we're in church don't mean we don't talk about it. We're going to praise God and, and, and worship God, and, and, but we're going to go through it by Scripture. Amen. 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 Because we've got to deal with some things that's pulling us as believers out of the will of God. Yes. And see, on a whole, you've got you know, churches that don't want to talk about it, but yet you've got churches that are doing it. You got people that are falling. You got people that are messing up and oopsing and, 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 and all of this. And we've got to hit certain things to give us an understanding of what's happening when I allow certain behavior. Because can this be an issue that will cause me to stumble in my walk with God? Yes. Can this hinder my process and hinder areas in God that I'm supposed to get to? Yes. Is this very serious? Yes. Is this a matter of life and death, heaven or hell? Yes. Amen. So as much as it may be, you know, always, you know, well, not always, you know, kind of uncomfortable to hear, it's necessary. Amen. Amen. Because we're saying, God, I want you to use me. I want to be used by you. I want to do your will. I want to do what you've called me to do and what you've purposed me to do. And see, with that, God is going to deal with every area in your life. Amen. If you are going to be used by God, he is going to deal with every area in your life. And it's a good thing. That's something where we can say, God, thank you. Because for some of these things, we're, you know, for some, we, 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 we got people that are struggling and really honestly don't know how to get out of certain things. And it's It's real. You got people struggling with things and struggling with different addictions and, and, and things like that. And it's like, I really do want to live right, but I done got involved in certain things so young and I was introduced so young and things happened in my childhood or this, that, and the other. And I really do love God. Yeah. I just don't know how to get out of certain places. And, and, and see, when it, comes to, when it comes to sex and when it comes to your body, it could be one of the hardest things, if not the hardest, 
to control. All right, y'all ready? Yes. Buckle up. Y'all ready? Yes. Okay. Okay, guys, see how many little ears we got in here. And like I said, I'm going to say some things, and I know we, we got, you know, young ears, so, you, you know, some things I may say a little, little coded, you know, so for those who wasn't here last week, you know, if you want to bring little headphones and a little iPad for your children while we're on certain topics, you can absolutely do so, you know, truth of the matter is sometimes kids know more than the adults. <laughs> Amen. Go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. Read it in the New Living for me. <clears throat> chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Then the Lord God planted a garden in the east, in, in the east. And there he placed the man he had made. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But the things that we're going to talk about, you know, and, and I want y'all to hear me because we got to make sure we hear correctly. Because this is not coming from a place, you know, it, we, it, the bottom line is we've all missed it. We've all fallen short. Right. 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 All of us. Right. Every last one of us. You, you know, so this is not coming to condemn or make anybody feel bad or put you down. No, see, I, I want the word of God to show us that we can see a way out of the stuff that we're in. Amen. So just because some things may come strong, that doesn't mean it's to beat you down. It, it, it's, it's, some things come strong to wake us up and to shake us sometimes out of the stupor that we're in. Amen. The word needs to shake us up sometimes. It needs to wake us up sometimes, all the time. Amen. So I want you to, to make sure you're hearing, you know, right. Okay. Well, nobody saying, you know, Pastor Joe act like she ain't never did this and been through anything. And, you know, like I said, I have. I've told my story many times. I've had to call on the help of the Lord many times. Is it real what goes on in your mind? Yes. Is it real what goes on in your body? Yes. Is it real what goes on? I preach, but I am flesh and blood. Amen. Amen. Now go to 15 to 18 for me, because we're going back, we were talking about, you know, relationships and going all the way back to the beginning and what God did and what God gave before God gave a person. Because a lot of times we're wanting certain things to happen in our lives and we're wanting relationships, but we're, we're, we're not in a place where God wants to, to give us what he needs to give us before he gives us a person. And so many times we can get, you, you, you know, because we, we get to a certain place and you get to a certain age where you're saying, you know, I, I should have this by now. I should have certain things by now. I'm 21 years old. I should have a place. I should have a car. I should have a house. I should have a husband. I should have children. God, why isn't this happening? And see, sometimes if we're not careful, my seat can change from God to going after the promise that he already promised he would give me. And then I can end up getting something that's not him. So that's where you've got to see as God is taking you and preparing you and 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 pruning you and cutting away dead things in your life so that you can that you are able to produce you've got to understand before he brings a person it is certain things that God wants to do and certain things that God wants to give you Amen. so that you're not just ready for the perfect person but you're also ready for the purpose Amen. See, this is where you have to remember. Your relationships are supposed to have purpose. 
And see, that's where we can look at relationships and say, you know, oh, relationships, you know, I can judge this one and that one, and this is wrong and that's wrong. And No, and I've said this many times and I'm saying it again. It's not that relationships are wrong. It's where when I'm in a relationship and the purpose is unknown, that opens the door to the enemy. So when I'm looking at relationships, I got to look who I'm letting in. Because who I let in can affect where I'm going. Amen. 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 I got a prophecy a, 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 a long time ago. God, like I said, God has been speaking to me about my, my husband since I was 15. And I got a prophecy. The first prophecy I ever got about my husband, we were on the other side. And it was when the presbytery was here. And I, I, I remember it verbatim. And they said, daughter, choose wisely who you yield yourself to. Choose wisely who you submit yourself to. For the call of God that is on your life is in the balance of your choosing. That's serious. And see, God is not saying that to just me. God is saying that to many. Because that literally tells me who I choose can determine if I will do God's will or I won't. So the call of God that's on my life is hanging in the balance of a person that I picked to be in my life. It's serious. Because you have a lot of people that are living outside of their purpose all because a person So it's certain things, and, 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 oh, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So it's certain things that God wants to do in your life before he gives you a person. That's where you have to understand the preparation time that God is taking for, with you is not wasted time. Amen. 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 Preparation time is never Wasted time. Amen. Go ahead. The Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So, number one, what did he do? Let's see if we could get this this time. We was kind of struggling last week. So, number one, he did what? Number two? Number three? Number four? Identity. Let's, let's, let's go back a little bit to identity because the number one tactic of the enemy is for you not to know who you are and see a lot of times and this is where we've got to see because a lot of times we're trying to find identity and and what we do and and what we're around and what i like but the only way i can find my true identity is through knowing god and knowing the word of god getting into the word of god i find me when i find him I find me and I know me and I know the true identity of me when I get to know him. Because out, if I'm looking for who I am outside of knowing him, then I'm always going to have a missed view of who I'm supposed to be. Amen. Go to Genesis uh, 1 and 27, the Amplified. So God created man in his own image. In the image. Listen, in the God created man in his image. See, you, you, you know how sometimes you, you, you read things and you just read in it? I, I want us to really get it. Like, let it click. Let it soak. Let it marinate. Okay? Go ahead. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him. 
Male and female, he created them. So we can get confused about our identity when we're constantly looking at the identity of someone else. Amen. See, again, that's, that's, that's why the enemy wants us always to look, in at, look at this one and, 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 and that one and, and, and this. Because if he can get me off track of knowing me, then I won't walk in what I'm called to be. See, you got to understand, every single day, the enemy is trying to lure you. In one way or another, there's not one day that goes by that he's not trying to get you into his plan and out of God's. See, that's why the Bible says, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices, because he's roaming around seeing who can I devour. See, he's not looking at the world, but he got them. He's looking at us. Because he's looking to see, okay, who's getting it, who's not? Who's seeing who they are, who's not? Who's in the word, who's not? Who's praying, who's not? Let me see who I can devour. See, that's where we can't take prayer and and getting into the presence of God lightly. Because I've got to realize, there is an attack on my life every day. See, sometimes we're just not paying attention because it may not be big enough for us to see. Because sometimes an attack can come real smooth. Sometimes an attack can come real cute. Oh, boy. And see, I'm not looking at that as an attack until I have to fight. Oh, boy. Thank you, Lord. So the number one tactic of the enemy is for me not to know who I am. Because, again, the only way we find who we really are is when we know God. That's why even when we've been playing the song a, a, a few times, Jonathan Nelson called to be, can we play just that, that, that chorus part for me? in the song even in the song where where he's saying and 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 that's got to be our prayer that's got to be our confession that God I'll be who you've called me to be but see in order for me to be who God has called me to be I have to agree with it I have to come into agreement with who God says I am Amen. Because it does nothing if I say it, but I never come in agreement with it. If I'm asking God and I'm saying to God and and my prayer is and my confession is and my declaration is that I will be God who you've called me to be. I'll do what you've called me to do. I'll go where you've called me to go. I'll have what you meant for me to have. I have to come in agreement with his word. And then once I come in agreement with his word, I've got to make sure my life now lines up with what I'm coming in agreement with. Because other than that, it's a hope and it's a wish. And me being who God called me to be is not going to just happen by happenstance. It's going to happen as I line my life up and align it with who God is saying I am. See, I have to do more than just raise my hands and sing the song and cry and fall out. I've got to look at my life and put my life in order so that I can go where God calls me to go. Do what God calls me to do. But that takes me aligning myself with the word. And if I'm going to align myself with the word, I have to know the word. If I'm going to align myself with the word, I have to be in the word. If I'm going to align myself with what God is saying, I've got to be in a place with God that I can hear. 
because I'm hearing for direction. I'm hearing for instruction for what God is doing. See, we got to see, walking in the purpose and the plan and the will of God is not just this poof, boom, there it go. This is work. It's work. And see, I've got to see that in order for me to get to these places and, and really do what God has called me to do, I got to look at my life and I got to work on some stuff. I got to work on me. I can't think that God and, and the Holy Spirit is going to pull out some magic wand and make me twirl around and poof, I'm in a big puffy dress. This is not Cinderella. We wish it was that easy. It's work. And see, we've got to see, and, and I've said this many times before also, because we've got to see, I work to become everything else in my natural life. I work to become the teacher, the doctor, the lawyer, the nurse, the, the manager, the supervisor. I'll get the training necessary for the promotion and, and, and for the pay raise. And I understand that I got to work at that and I got to do things to get that. And see, we've got to take that same mentality and apply it to our spiritual life. Yeah. That I got to work just as hard for my spiritual life because this is the life that I'm going to answer for. This is the life that really matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. So as much as I'm becoming all of these great things, and hear me, I'm not saying we need that because we are on this earth. But when I leave this earth, I'm still going to answer. And I'm going to answer not for my job, I'm going to answer for my call. Amen. Tell somebody, I got to line it up. I got to line it up. Because a lot of times we're trying to find our identity everywhere else but God. See, this is where I have to understand. I don't find my identity when I come into, into knowing a man and, and knowing the love of a man and, and, and knowing the, the love of a, of a woman. You know, I'm not coming into my identity when I get married. I'm not coming into my identity when I'm dating. I come into my identity when I know God. And sometimes we're trying to, we're, we're thinking we're going to change into something when my mate comes. When I have to change into something before my mate comes because I'm going after God. And God is going to turn my life and change me into what he's called me to be for the person that does come into my life. See, this is where we got to understand. And this is where we got to remember, I've got to make myself ready. I've got to become what I want. Amen. Amen. And un a ready man is not going to want an unready woman. Amen. A ready woman is not going to want an unready man. Amen. So if this is something that I'm saying, God, I want, then I've got to actively ready myself. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Tell somebody, I got to get ready. I got to get ready. One of the reasons that your mind has to stay renewed is so that you can walk in the true identity of who you are. See, because we can't, we can't think that, you know, I can walk this Christian walk without renewing my mind. Mm -mm. I can't walk this walk because as I've said many times before, and I'm going to say it again, unrenewed mind is always going to be in a weak state no matter how smart you are. Amen. And see, I've got to make sure I'm constantly renewing my mind with the word of God because that's the only way I'm going to walk in the true identity of who I am. An unrenewed mind does not walk in the true identity of God. 
I can know who I'm supposed to be. I can know what God is calling me to be. But if I don't renew my mind, it's only something that I hear but never walk in. Y'all hearing? Tell somebody, I got to keep my mind renewed. I got to keep my mind renewed. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, the thing is, we have to understand that we will never be, because, because uh, again, that's why I said we, we can't, I, I, I can't get my identity from, from somebody else. And see, that's why we got, you know, today, and it's sad because we, we have a whole lot of reality TV clones. Because you really have so many people, including the church, trying to look like and act like and model after what uh, 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 social media and television and all of that is showing us. So the church is not becoming clones of the word. It's becoming clones of the world. And we're looking more like what we see out there instead of like God. And see, the, the, I've got to get this, because understand, you will never be completely comfortable in the identity of someone that is not you. I'm going to say it again. You will never be completely comfortable in the identity of someone that is not you. See, that's where you have to be careful of what comes in and who comes in your life to change your identity. You hear me? You've got to be careful of what and who comes in your life to change your identity. And see, this is where you got to see the enemy because the enemy is shrewd and the enemy is subtle. And see, sometimes I've got things that's coming in my life that's changing my identity and I'm not even realizing it. Right. Amen. See, you got to see what, what can come in. Again, what can come in to change your identity can be real cute, real nice, real fun, real kind. But all the while, there's a motive behind it. The enemy has an agenda behind it. And see, I'm not looking at the fact that this is changing me because I'm, ooh, ooh. Oh, mm-hmm. Then I'm not seeing myself slowly but surely changing. I'm not seeing, I'm, I'm seeing myself slowly but surely conforming. And it's changing my identity to the point. And this is where I said you have to be careful because the things that used to convict you, now you consider. So there was a time in my life and in my walk and in, in, you know, in the strength and power and the anointing of God that I said, oh, 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 never will I, never will I conform to that. This is my stand. This is my boundaries. This is where I am. But then I start considering what used to convict. Because I'm not realizing that the enemy is slowly but surely changing my identity. And when my identity begins to change, my mind begins to consider. Y'all hear me? And see, you've got to be careful because the enemy is shrewd like that. Because then you get into reasoning. That before, oh, you know, I would never do this, and I'm never going to do that. And, and, and then it can turn into, well, it's, it's okay. It's, it's not that much. It's not, a, it's not a lot. It's just, oh, Jesus. 
Come on, give God a praise. Because, see, the enemy wants to get you in a place where he can operate in your life so that he takes you to, it's not that bad. It's not that much. It's not that often. Not realizing that who I was is now becoming who I said I wouldn't be. What I do is now becoming what I said I'll never do. How I think is now becoming, I, I, I would never think like that. I would never allow those thoughts to come in. And so I'm seeing more and more of the convictions in my life that really became standards in my life. I'm now considering to let in my life. Tell somebody, be careful what you consider that you used to be convicted by. See, that's why, you know, have you ever been, you know, you ever been around a person or around a friend or around a whatever, and, and you know, you're having a good time, and you're laughing, you're joking, you, you, you're just enjoying yourself, and, and, and then, you know, when you go home at night and you, 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 you lay your head down and, 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 and something just within you says, mm, something ain't right. How many have ever been there? We can raise hands, feet, toes. <laughs> that you can, you know, when your mind starts reminiscing and as much as you laugh and as much as you joked and, and it's those times when you get quiet that something in you begins to start turning and this, it's not sitting right. And see, that's where you can't get confused of, of, of what is new to then what becomes grieving to the Holy Spirit within me. Yes. See, because some things I can look at, you know, well, I'm, I'm, I'm doing certain things and I'm coming out of my shell and, I, you know, I'm experiencing, I'm, I'm in a new relationship, I got new people and friends around me, you know. So certain things is new and, you, you know, I'm starting to open up a little bit and, you know, be a little bit more active and do things and do this and do that and go here and go, where, go there. And, and see, that's a difference between me being grieved and something being just new. See, because new, I can just kind of brush off, but something that's grieving to the spirit of God that lives on the inside of me, God is not going to let me just brush it off because when it's when it comes like that and it becomes grieving to him living on the inside of me he's going to make sure he talks to me about it amen amen see and that's where i've got to have ears to hear this is why my time with god is so important because you don't want to get into a place where you're grieving the Holy Spirit of God, but yet you can't hear the voice. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, tell somebody, I got to hear. I got to hear. See, understand and really get that God made you to be like him. God made you to be like him. I'm not talking about just looking like him. I'm talking about being like him. See, this is my mom. It's one thing for me to look like my mom. It's another thing for me to be like my mom. And see, God is saying, I want you to be like me. Be holy, for I am holy. So he's saying, be like me. See, and this is what we can't look, you know, to be like God and, ooh, and, and just be powerful like him and do miracles and do wonders and do great things. No, be like him in obedience. Be like him in character. Be like God in integrity. 
Hallelujah. Be like God in my yieldedness. Be like God in my faithfulness. Be like God in my love walk. Amen. Amen. See, and if I'm not going to be like you, then really I'm not going to look much like you. Because again, if I'm in my, my identity will start to change. That's why you can see people and see, you know, when somebody been out for a long time and you be like, ooh, they look different. Ooh, it's something different. Because what you're seeing is the identity begin to change. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. See, again, this is why we have to keep putting the word of God on the inside of us because it's the word of God that keeps me renewed. This is something that I have to do daily. See, I've got to see. The word is something that I've got to do daily. The word said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the moment that I stop getting, it said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the only way I'm not going to be like this world is if I renew my mind, then that's when I am transformed. Amen. But see, he said, be not conformed. But once I begin to get out of this, and once I start letting this go, is the moment I start conforming. See, that's why we can't play, you know, with the things of God. And, you know, it don't take that much. And it don't, it don't. See, you got to sometimes remember where your life has been. You got to remember sometimes what God has brought you out of. And think, did it take that much? Does it take that much? Yes. Because I see how the devil had me locked into stuff for years. I see how the devil had me addicted to stuff for years. And it don't take that much? Oh, I beg to differ. Oh, you ain't got to be in the word like that. Oh, you don't know where I may have come from. You don't got, it don't take all, it don't take all of that. Oh, you don't know what it took to get me out. You don't know what it took for me to get delivered. You don't know what it took for me to get set free. And it don't take all of that. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, this is why we can't think it's okay that I can just be out of the presence of God and out of the word of God and think that it's not affecting me. Because it is. And to the next thing you looking like, how did I get here? How did I get here? See, okay, I'm going to say it anyway. I'm, I'm ahead of myself a little bit. See, you got to understand with Samson and Delilah. See, Samson played with the warnings that he kept getting. But see, what we got to understand is Samson was losing his strength before he lost his strength. He didn't realize that every time he laid in that lap, he was losing strength. Yeah. And see, he didn't recognize how much strength and what he had lost until he was presented with a fight. Wow. Wow. See, you don't want to come up on a fight and then realize I don't have nothing in me left to fight. You want to pay attention because all along he was losing his strength while he was kiki and ha ha and enjoying that lap and whatever else. No. But all along, strength was being taken. And he did not realize how much he had lost until he was presented with a fight. Oh, Jesus. See, this is why we can't be in the mindset, you, you, you know, where, where, you know, well, I'm, I'm, 
I'm always in the Word, and I always read the Word. And, you know, see, we don't get to a point where we get an out of the Word. Like, we have come to a point of arrival where I have read so much of the Word that I don't need to read the Word anymore. No, 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 no. See, th this is something that no matter who you are, no matter where you go, no matter what you have done, you're going to always need the word of God. No matter how much you put in before, you still need more now. And see, you don't want to get into a mindset of, you, you know, well, I, 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 I've read the word and I, I've done that and, you know, I've been doing that and all that kind of stuff. See, because what happens is then I can give myself an out. I can give myself an out. And then when I'm confronted with something, then what I start doing, I start pulling from my mind and not from my spirit. I start pulling from what I memorized and not what I put in. See, you've got to understand, your mind can be intact while your spirit be dry. Hallelujah. Your mind can be intact when your spirit is without fresh oil. And so what happens, we think we're okay because I can pull the word from my mind. But what's going on in here? Because it, the word says it's the spirit of a strong man that will sustain him. What's in my spirit, not what's in my mind. And I wonder why I'm falling and I wonder why I'm tripping because now I'm failing to put something in my spirit. Hallelujah. 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 See, these are things that we got to see. These are things that we got to see just because it's here. Don't mean it's here. Because it's when it's here that I'm walking in it. It's when it's in my spirit that my spirit has it that I'm going to walk, not my mind. Because I've got to understand how much my mind can change. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are y'all getting something? Y'all hear? Are we hearing? See, because these are things that we got to get. Because if not, then we're going to surely stumble. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to keep stumbling over stuff that I know. I don't want to keep stumbling over stuff that I have in my mind, but I can't walk it out because it's not in my spirit. Read again Genesis uh, 2. And I'm not going to be, oh, I'm not going to get nowhere where I, I really. No, I, see, I did good last time. I did good. I did good twice, and I think it was like twice in a row. I mean, but come on, we want the Lord to have his way. Amen. <laughs> Go to Genesis 2. Yes. No, no, no. 15 to 18. The Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden. Whoa. But listen, he said, you can eat of every other tree. Every, see, you would have thought when he said, don't touch this one, that it was only that one and another one. Like it was only two. You got every other tree here. And God said, don't touch that one. You can eat from all of the rest. Just don't eat that one. Okay, go ahead. But the Lord God warned him. You may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. 
Then the Lord God said, If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Is that verse 16? That's 17. Uh, okay, stop right there. So, okay, so number one was a place. Number two was purpose. Number three was provision. Number four was identity. Number five is what? Parameters, yes. So he said, you can freely eat of every other tree except, except. So God gave parameters. Parameters is a limitation, restriction, or a specification. This is where we have to know that with our process and with your process that you walk, there is always going to be an except. Within your process with this walk, there's always going to be a tree that God says, don't touch. Right. Oh, see, we thought the tree stopped at Eden. Oh, no, no, no. We just got different forms of trees now. And as you walk... <laughs> And as you go, my sister says she's about to hit me. There is always going to be a tree. Yes. Help us, God. Yes. How many done seen them trees? We done all had them trees. And them trees grow a lot of fruit. It's a lot of stuff. See, see, that's where, oh, I don't want to get ahead. I don't want to get ahead. I don't want to get ahead. Within the process, within your walk, within your life, there will always be things that God says don't touch. I don't care if you a prayer warrior, intercessor, well, you done ran around the world five times and back again. There is always going to be things in your life, no matter what level you are at, that God says, don't touch. Why? Because this is not my end. Tell somebody, don't touch. Read verse 17 for me. Except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. He said, if you, he said, if you eat its fruit, you are what? Sure to die. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. So die didn't mean death as in buried in the ground. Die in this case meant a separation from God. See, that's where you've got to see what the devil wants because the devil is wanting you to eat of things that you are sure to die. Oh, Jesus, y'all. Amen. See, what the enemy wants you to do, he wants you to start partaking in things that will bring about a separation between you and God. Oh, tell somebody, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. See, that's where you have got to look at your life. Look in your life, look around your life, and you have got to be able to identify the tree. You have got to be able to identify the things that are coming into your life that are trying to bring about a separation between you and God. Because the enemy is saying, I want to bring things that you will start eating of that separate you. Separate you from seeing, separate you from hearing, separate you from walking in the purpose and the plan and the will of God. I want you to eat of it to separate you all the way around that you will surely die. The question is, can you identify your tree? 
Because again, your tree can be cute. Your tree can be tall. Your tree can be kind. Your tree can be nice. Your tree can be funny. But your tree can also bring death. Your tree can also bring a separation between you and God. And while you enjoying the fruit of that tree, what is it doing to your life? How is your tree? Is it causing you not to hear? What's going first? What's dying first? My ability to hear? My ability to see? My ability to discern? My ability to get revelation? My ability to get understanding? See, and sometimes we're so much enjoying the tree. That's why the Bible says sin is pleasurable for a season because you have your pleasurable time. And see, nobody wants to hear what's going on when they're in the pleasurable part. Nobody wants to hear anything when I'm eating up my tree and we kiki and and ha ha and and we having fun enjoying each other, but I'm not recognizing what within my life something's leaving me. I'm not recognizing that this tree is causing my identity to now change. I'm not realizing yet because I haven't ran to here, so I'm not realizing yet that I'm having so much fun and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm not even realizing I can't even hear no more. I'm enjoying so much, I'm not realizing but that I can't even see and recognize God. I'm not even realizing that, when was the last time I got revelation? See, let me tell you, because this right here, trees don't, don't, don't age restrict. Trees, that, trees don't gender restrict. Trees will come to anybody no matter what age you are. This is not, your tree is not gender specific. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, that's where, you know, I talked about uh, 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 the, the movie uh, uh, Proud Mary and this is why we got to look at what's coming in and out of our lives and what's trying to join itself to me and what's trying to attach itself to me and what's trying to call me friend see see, like I asked and I, I'm not going to ask it again because I was just so disappointed at the answer last time but I asked y'all did y'all see what was it Proud Mary and it was like three people that raised their hand and I'm like okay well praise God y'all don't watch TV I guess you know, but then I'm like, okay, who's seen, who seen the Godfather? And then I was like, okay, who was sitting on their porch? Just in Chester. Because <laughs> you, somewhere you're going to see something. <laughs> so look out your window. So... I was saying, like, in those type of movies, particularly Proud Mary, I I've seen The Godfather, like, one time, and, I, I, yeah, it, it, it just, I, yeah, one time. So I was looking at Proud Mary, and, and, you know, they were assassins. And so, you know, when they, would, they was going against each other for whatever beef they had and, and, and shooting this one and shooting that one and capturing this one, but when they captured somebody, one of the first questions that they would always ask is, who sent you? And they would try to get out of the person who sent you because then we got to know where to target our next attack. See, this is where when people are coming in and out of our lives, you've got to be able to look and you've got to be able to learn to say, who sent you? Who sent you? Because are you sent by God? Are you sent by the enemy? Are you trying to become a tree? See, and a lot of times, we're letting people in our lives not looking at the sender. Right, right. Because before you get too close to me, before you get all up in my space, I need to know who sent you. 
Because you could be trying to plan an attack on me, and I don't even know it. But see, by the word of God, I can begin to discern. Mm -mm, something ain't right about you. Uh-uh, something is wrong. You ain't none of God's. Who your sender is? <laughs> but for real, you better start looking at your life and say, okay, I need to know who sent you. I need to know who sent you. I need to know who sent you. I definitely need to know who sent you. Talk about can we go out? Not until I know the sender. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you got to understand, anytime that you are headed to destiny, distractions are always the inevitable. And what do distractions come to do? And even, because, even though distract, distractions come, it don't mean they have to distract. But you got to understand, when, distract, when distractions come, they come to make you lukewarm. And any time you see a believer that's become lukewarm, you know distractions done got in somewhere. And see, when I become lukewarm, then I become a, 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 a candidate for God not to release what he has for me. See, you got to see how much is on the line. We've got to see how much is on the line when we dipping and dabbing and playing with wrong stuff. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, y'all with me? I'm getting ready to close. I'm get, I got a few more minutes. These are sanctified minutes, so that means they one minute is like five. <laughs> So real quick, go to 1 Corinthians. Y'all getting something? Yeah. Amen. See, you got to understand, there's a whole lot of good wrong. That's right. There is a whole lot of good wrong. But see, that's where you have to see. Are the things, are the pleasurable things in my life worth me living beneath my purpose? Are these things that I'm partaking of and the tree that I'm eating of and, and the things that I'm enjoying and they're all pleasurable, is it worth me living beneath my purpose? Because I don't want to get to a place where God says to me, you know, I had so many plans for you. I had this for you and I had that for you. And, you, you know, and I wanted to do this and take you here. But because of your level of obedience changed, I can only do it right here. And see, we got to make sure that because I get somebody in my life, my level of obedience to God doesn't switch. Yes. Because I get somebody in my life, my level of obedience and my commitment and my yieldedness and my faithfulness to God and what he's called me to do does not diminish. Amen. 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 See, that's where test will, will, will come to see. Let me see if they're ready. Can they have this and do that? Can they handle this and have that? Or every time something comes into my life, or comes into the, their life, my life, your life, they let go of me. I, I get lower on the scale. Wow. See, this is more about being single. See, it's easy to say I got something more in control when, when I don't have to control it. Right. It's different when I now have something in my life where I have to control. That's the real test. Because by myself, I can say, oh, I'm good. You know, I'm fine. Well, you don't have anything to mess up with. Well, unless we go back to the fellowship of one, which we're going to get into not today. But do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. See, you've got to be able to see because you've got to see, you know, where, how strong is my hunger for purpose? How strong is my hunger for the will of God? How strong is my hunger for destiny? Because my, my, my hunger has to be stronger for purpose than it is for sex. Yes. Right. Right. It has to 
be stronger for the will of God. My hunger has got to be stronger for the will of God in my life to be done than it is to have a person. Amen. Amen. Because I got to see what I want is what he already promised. And see, in your waiting time, it, it, your waiting time will show what you're hungry for by what you eat. It will show what you're hungry for by what you eat. Your weight will show what you're hungry for by who you're around. Your weight will show you what you're hungry for by what you accept. And see, the sad thing, and this is where believers has, have, have got to come up, and, I, and I'm talking about all of us, myself included. This is where we got to come up and make sure that when somebody does come into my life, that it doesn't change my appetite. That my appetite is still for the will of God. My appetite is still for righteousness and holiness. My appetite is still for purpose. My appetite is still being and doing all that God has called me to be. Hallelujah. Real quick, 1 Corinthians 10, 23 and 24. What time is it? Okay, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I need, uh, let's just read that real quick. All things are legitimate, permissible, and we are free to do anything we please. Listen, listen. All things are what? L are legitimate. And, and what? Permissible? Permissible. And we're free to do? Anything we please. See, the, 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 the power of living a, a, a mature Christian life is that I, 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 I can do this, but I don't. Power in living a mature Christian life is that I can, but I won't. I, I, I can do whatever I want to do, but I don't want to grieve God. I don't want to, my appetite to change where I start pleasing my flesh over pleasing God. Because I can do whatever I want to do. But I know I'm walking in a certain place when I can and I don't. See, I can be in any relationship I want to be in. I can do whatever I want to do. I can date whoever I want to date. I can drink whatever I want to drink and, and party and club and do all of that. But the power of a mature Christian life, I can but I'm not. I can. I'm grown, all the way grown. All the way. I don't have to have permission. I don't have to ask. I can, but I'm not going to. Now, is it a fight? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is a fight, and it's a fight sometimes even in the word and after prayer and in prayer. You can feel like you can pray all day sometimes and still fight. Amen. Amen. But see, oh, and we didn't get into that. But, but see, the Bible tells me, see, these, this, these temptations that I'm, I'm experiencing, it's normal. And he's not giving me anything that I can't resist. The word says that. He's not giving me anything that I can't overcome. Amen. 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 See, that's why you've got to see the importance of putting this on the inside of you. Day after day after day after day. I don't care what you've done or where you've been. You can't afford to get weak. Like you heard me say, I don't care how smart you are, how many degrees you have, how much knowledge you have, how many schools you went to. If you have an unrenewed mind, your mind is always in a weak state. Right. This is the only thing 
that will change your mind. I've said many times, it's been many things that can come and change your life, but only few things that can come and change your mind. Drugs can change your life. Alcohol can change your life. Uh, 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 death can change your life. Food can change your life. Sickness can change your life. But only a few things can change your mind. The word of God will change your mind. See, that's why you can see people walking in the consequences of what changed their life. And you can see them still repeat the same stuff. Why? Because they never changed their mind. Hallelujah. 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 See, I've got to see. I, I, and that's why we got saved. See, when I sat here, the word changed my mind. And when the word changed my mind, it opened the door for Christ to then come into my life and change my life. But I see my mind had to be changed first. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. See, you got to see how many things are waiting for you to simply change your mind. How many blessings, how many, how many j j just things of God that God wants to release to you and give to you that are simply waiting for you to just change your mind? Because when I change my mind, I change my direction. Hallelujah. 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 God got good things in store for us. Good things. I know the wait is hard sometimes, but don't let the wait be wasted. Let the wait be productive. Amen. God has great things in store for us. He's a loving God. He's a good God. He's a forgiving God. He's a God that picks us up every time we fall and never gets tired of doing it. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. Thank you so much for joining us. We'd like to invite you back here again for Sunday morning service at 11 a.m. for Break It Down Wednesdays at 8 p.m. right here on nlmionline.org.